Hello and welcome to the business of music. I'm Chris Terry, your music consultant. Today we're going to be discussing the importance if you're an artist, producer, songwriter, or publisher, we're going to be discussing the importance of getting your music business in order. We're going to be discussing four modules during the program. The first module will be discussing getting your A-team together in terms of production, in terms of legal, and in terms of modifying all of your paperwork for the music business. In module two, we're going to be discussing copyrights, performing rights organizations, and we're going to be discussing publishing. In module three, we're going to be discussing the importance of how to start your own record label. And in module four, we'll be discussing the importance of SoundScan and BDS. Thank you and enjoy the program. Hi, I'm Fancy Floyd and welcome to YourMusicBiz.com. I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker for today. He's been in the music business for more than 10 years. His background includes music business consultant, artist management, and artist development. A graduate of the University of Detroit, he has an extensive background in the business of music which has made him a sought after consultant and presenter throughout the United States. He's worked with many notable record labels such as MCA, Arista, and various independent artists across the country. He's here to enlighten you about the business of music. Please welcome Chris Terry. Hello everyone and welcome again to yourmusicbiz.com. I'll be your presenter today. I'm Chris Terry. Today we're going to cover various topics. We're going to go through four modules today. We're going to discuss topics such as your A-team, publishing, how you run your own record label, and how technology has changed the music industry forever. First of all, we're going to start with our first module, your A-team. As an artist, when you're first starting off, you need to really set yourself apart from everyone else through your thinking, through your motivation and through your organizational skills in the music business. Establishing your A-team, that's the first order of business because what you want to do is you want to say, hey, I need to surround myself with individuals that's going to guide me, that's going to put me in the light of where I need to go in the business. The A-team consists of your overall music network and what I mean by that is individuals that will introduce you to individuals in the business and they don't have to necessarily be in the music business per se but you need to have a base you need to have a network base through consultants through the media through newspapers start networking start building your base up that's the first order of business because as we know the music business is a personal relationship business a lot of times it's who you know and how they know it so that's the first order of business the second thing is your uh, management team. Now, let me break management down because people are kind of misconstrued about what management is. First of all, you have your personal manager. Your personal manager is an individual who's going to take your career and assist you with moving that career forward. You want someone who has a running knowledge of the music business. That's first order of business. The second thing is a business manager. Your business manager is someone who's going to take care of the necessary paperwork when it comes to finances, when it comes to collecting your royalties from shows, from performances, things of that nature. So your personal manager and your business manager. Your personal manager is someone who's close to you, that knows you, that believes in your music. You can't run out and just grab a manager and they have no idea what you're all about because personal management is like a marriage per se. So you're going to be with that individual, they're going to know about you, you're going to know about them. A personal manager is going to basically plan your schedule, take care of your calendar, understand everything from day to day what you're doing because they're going to be handling your music career as well as assisting you in your personal career. So you have to choose a personal manager that's suitable to you. Um, when you're selecting a manager, you're going into a marriage. 
uh, in the music field is, uh, is 24 hours, even though you may not put but two or three hours, it's still a revolving business uh, from doing performances at night to having your schedule set during the day, uh, recording, uh, imaging. Uh, so the manager, you have to be able to trust someone because you're putting your career in their hands. So they're guiding your career more so. So the trust level has to be there and the manager has to trust that his artist is prepared. Uh, preparation means everything. A manager can't work with an artist that doesn't have uh, prep good preparational tools. So I think the trust comes in as far as with preparation and organization. The manager and, and artists are organized and prepared. It's going to be a great relationship. The next thing is consultant. Now, consulting in the music business can vary on different aspects. So your consultant needs to have a knowledge of every aspect of your A team. Your consultant may be someone that you contract. It may be on a contractual basis. They say, well, you know what, I need a consultant to look into finding various studios, researching producers, uh, assisting me, and possibly even finding management. You know, maybe researching a good entertainment lawyer. So you want to make sure that you seek out a consultant, a mentor, someone first before you start venturing off into constructing your A-team. Because once you get an A-team, that's vital. Your A-team is going to dictate how things are going to go in your career. That's the first order of business. Uh, uh, the fourth person on that A-team is your administrative legal team. When you're first starting off, I tell individuals, you don't have to have an entertainment lawyer from the start, but it's a wise idea to have an administrative legal team, someone who has a knowledge about the legalities of basic contracts, uh, basic agreements, things of that nature. Because once you learn those things, it opens your eyes up to what type of attorney do I need, okay? Because you can't just hire an attorney, you need an entertainment attorney, someone who understands entertainment law because everybody doesn't understand entertainment law and understand intellectual property. So I would like to break that down in terms of administration and in terms of legal. Your career is going to start with a piece of paper. First, your career starts with a thought. You know, you're using your imagination. I dreamed of being an artist, a producer, a label owner, a songstress, whatever it is, whatever your dream dictates it's going to be put down on paper. So we're going to term that as far as administration. How are you going to map that out? So the first order of business said, well, you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to be an artist. So you're going to take that and you're going to seek out all of these things that's going to take you to that next level. So administratively, you want to be organized. You want to set up some type of business plan, which I'll go into further in the further modules as far as how you set up a business and marketing plan. But your legal team can consist of a paralegal, uh, it consists of, you know, maybe a friend who's in the legal field. You just want the basics of how I start constructing a basic contract as far as dealing with these other aspects of things. Now, going back to your manager, once your administrative legal team is in place with just the basics, you'll be able to handle a management, a basic management contract. A basic management contract may or may not need a lawyer to look at that contract because you're constructing it based on your needs. But you're going to take advice from a consultant in your administrative legal team as far as do I do a two-year contract with the manager, a one-year contract, do I do a co-managing deal. You can do co-managing deals with someone as well because normally the, um, as far as the percentages go, a manager normally gets between 10 and 20 percent of an artist's contract. But your manager's, ultimately your manager's job is to get you a, either a label deal or a publishing deal. You know, and we're going to go into that a little further. But I just want to kind of give you the basics of that role of a manager. So you want to make sure that you're not just signing things away. And first of all, do not sign anything without consulting either a paralegal or an attorney. Don't sign anything. If you can't afford an attorney at that time, you can also seek other individuals that may assist you in reading a contract, a basic contract, you know, or maybe an attorney may do something on consignment for you. 
But first of all, make sure you put that in place also. So you have your overall network, your management team, your consultant, which can be your mentor as well, and your administrative legal team. Lastly, and probably the, the real core of your development on your A-team is your production team. Your production team is going to dictate how well your music comes off, how well your sound comes off, who you're partnering with to get the best sound that you can possibly get. It may vary whether you're in a band, whether you're singing, whether you're a songwriter, it varies. First of all, we're gonna start with if you're a band. If you're a band, naturally, if there's more than one member, you're considered a band, okay? So if you're considered a band, you wanna make sure that as a band, you all have the management and consulting in place from the beginning because as a band, your name has to be registered as a whole because you're partnering, you're going into a joint venture when you're part of a band or a group. So that's the first order of business. And as far as your production situation with the band, you wanna make sure that as far as our engineering, the studios that we use, uh, individuals that we use to bring in, everything is in order as far as your production team because that's what's gonna stick with you. If you're an individual singer, you may seek out uh, a songwriter. You may seek out uh, a lyricist. Uh, you may seek out a producer that does tracks, that sort of thing. So you wanna make sure you, you know, kinda get that whole core in order as far as if you're an individual artist. If you are a producer as well, your production team is your business. That's your business. If you're a label owner, if you're a producer, whatever it is, that's your team. So you wanna go back, go back to management and consulting. You want to make sure you have proper production contracts. When you uh, sign a production agreement, make sure that you consult with a legal advisor as far as that production agreement is concerned. So as far as your A-team, which is going to you know, push that vehicle, make that vehicle go, your overall music network, your management team, your consultant, administrative legal team, and your production team. Now, I want to go back to your overall music network. A lot of times, when an artist tries to say, well, you know, I want to go to the next level. You know, I'm doing my local thing in my local community, but as far as who I'm going to pull in, as far as my network is concerned, that's going to determine who you are, you know, who you are overall, because as you go, your network goes. Whether you're doing rock, country, pop, it doesn't matter. Whatever genre of music that you're going into, make sure you touch that base. You can't perform country and western music in an urban market, okay? So it's, it's vital, it's vital that you stick with your network. And you can kind of go outside your community to do that. So don't stay in a pigeonhole. And, and first of all, your music network, you shouldn't be in a pigeonhole from the beginning because that's going to dictate your career as a whole. If you're doing uh, R&B and hip-hop, you're not going to do that in a community that's focused on gospel music, okay? So you have to be very careful about the network that you choose to push your music towards. And uh, lastly, I want to talk a little bit more about administrative and legal. I've been dealing with contracts for over 10 years, and the mistake that most artists make would be not handling their business properly, not seeking out the proper advice before they go into it. You cannot write a song without it being in, on paper. And we're going to go into that in, in our second module as far as how you understand the proper procedures of writing, copywriting, and production, and as far as those phases are concerned. So your administrative and legal team should be able to handle basic contracts. If you can't look at a basic contract and understand it, please seek help and assistance with that. So anyway, that's going to do it for our first module as far as our A team, remember your overall music network, your management team, your business manager, and your personal manager. Your business manager can be an accountant, it could be a lawyer, it could be someone with a finance background. You want to make sure your business manager is someone who understands numbers. That's very important. Your business manager is not your personal manager. You know, try to separate the two. You know, because one cannot do the other person's job because your personal manager is busy taking care of your calendar, taking care of your uh, personal matters, and basically structuring your career. Your business manager is someone who understands numbers, who's going to make sure those taxes are paid on time. 
so you don't get in trouble with the IRS. So it's very important that you take your time and choose a very good business manager. Um, next would be as far as uh, your consultant. Make sure that in consulting, you choose someone who's your mentor, someone you can get advice from, someone that has an understanding of the overall music industry, and someone who understands what an A-team consists of. Uh, administrative legal team, we have an understanding of that, and your production team. You know, your producers, your songwriters, your musicians, people that you surround yourself musically with, that's your production team. And the thing I want to mention is that your team is someone, they don't have to be around you all the time. It's someone that you can pick up the phone, you can call, you can go to the studio, you can count on those individuals as far as being a part of your team. So your A team is what's going to get you going. So we're going to keep it rolling. And if we have any questions, I will take questions from the audience. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Terry, uh, thank you for all of the enlightening information. Um, one thing that I may have missed, but I didn't hear much about the image part of maybe uh, rather be an artist for hip hop, R&B, gospel. Who handles the image? Because I know that's something that I see a lot in the business or in the industry. Um, people, you know, concerned about whether they're going to dress this way or that way. What kind of promotion and image? Who handles that? Okay, that was a good question. Um, as far as your image is concerned, that would fall under management. Your personal manager is responsible for putting together an imaging consulting team. So as far as uh, your bookings, as far as uh, your day-to-day -day activities, getting from point A to point B, your personal manager will handle that. But as far as extra activities, as far as your image is concerned, that would fall under your personal manager and seeking out either image consultant, if they don't you know, provide that service themselves, or putting together a team to make sure that your image coincides with your music, with your production, with you know, your stage performance, that sort of thing. So I hope that was uh, answered your question. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I wonder that you were talking about managers and that uh, they need to be closer, you need to you know, observe them very closely. What is the best way to go about finding a manager or screening a manager? Okay, that was a, a great, great question. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to try to build an audience. A manager will seek you out after you're, you know, you're performing, you're out there, you're writing songs, you're getting exposure. So once you start making exposure as far as for yourself, then you can seek out individuals. Because when I mention as far as your overall music network, a lot of times you may be at certain venues, no matter whether, whatever genre of music you're doing, at certain venues, people will seek you out. People will take an interest in what you're doing. But you can't find a manager if you're at home, okay? You can't be in your bedroom doing music and a manager is gonna come to you. So it's best to go about your overall music network and seek out management through that aspect. And, you know, different referrals, you can talk to individuals, uh, just, you know, studios, things of that nature. But the best way to do it is as far as providing exposure for yourself because you will seek out individuals who are gonna be interested in your career. Okay, thank you.